Good morning everyone, it's Thursday uh, morning. Um, I haven't been able to film much up to this week so far because we've been doing um, a lot of work and I've been uh, concentrating on that rather than um, filming. Um, but so I thought I'd take quite a few minutes, it's about half past eight at the moment before everybody else arrives. This week from um, last Sunday the 29th we've been doing uh, a working week down at the railway you saw from the last update that the building was delivered which you can see in the uh, background there through the trees um, and this week we've concentrating on getting the track in um, fitting the track inside the workshop and some preliminary electrical works um, and doing all sorts of other uh, manner of jobs so I'll walk through the site at the moment and um, point out what we've been doing and uh, where it doesn't look much but actually it's taken quite a lot of work to get to this point so um, as I say, I'll walk through and we'll, we'll have a look at what's been done so far. So for the outside track work, we started here at the um, Dell crossover. The crossover is the original track. And you can see where we've laid some new track on the um, current downline, which is coming out of Woody Bay. I'm facing the into Woody Bay. The upline is just to our left here. Um, so we dug out the track, removed it all. Um, there's a transition rail, we, you can see here, because we go from the this rail here, which is 25 pound weighted rail, to the new rail, which is slightly thicker and heavier. And you can see um, the difference between the two rails on the point further up. But <clears throat> this piece of rail in the foreground here is a transition rail, where it goes from 25 pound to uh, 30 pound rail in old money and you can see that the welded joint there. So that's gonna go in this little gap on these sleepers here to make up the joint between the end of the points there and the old rail on the points there. And there's another rail this side as well with another welded joint there um, for that side. So, and then we go on to brand new point. All uh, been built for us. Uh, the, we bought six of these in total for quite a lot of money. Um, the turnout to the right hand side there is going to go through the trees up to where the back of the digger is um, and there'll be another point for the two roads into the, or the two tracks into the shed um, we've actually done quite a lot of groundwork in the yard because we ripped out all the um, stone and old track bed in the yard because the track's going to be completely relayed so we've put crushed concrete down um, first when we scraped back there's a pile of muck to be taken away by a gravel lorry there. Um, scrape down town to uh, clay level, spread out some crushed concrete and then put a layer of ballast on the top. There's a little patch just where the digger's sitting there to infill with ballast. Um, and we've done that over the whole yard. Um, where you can just see in front of the digger. Um, and there's going to be a concrete pad coming out of the uh, doors there for a flat hard standing just outside the workshop there. For local preparation etc so um, we've laid the track in between the next point and this is all brand new ballasting bags that you saw being bagged up in the last video uh, ready to be put on the track for packing and uh, making it look nice this is the second new point um, it's a left hand turnout to go into the carriage shed which is what you see there that's where our carriage is stored and there's a little bit of a gap where we've got to make up a uh, another transition rail um, to go from new rail to old rail um, so that'll be done today and then straight down by the side of the shed where those other two rails are laying is with the main line carries on right down towards the station there um, again we've dug all that out regraded it um, filled it in with a bit of ballast etc and um, made it the grade such that it's still on a falling gradient because the track by the station is slightly lower than um, where it is up here so once we've done all that, it'll look nice. Turning back to face the other way now, you can see, like I said, we've um, relayed the yard area with, um, we actually used some of the old ballast, because it's only base bottom layer ballast, it's fine. Um, the ballast we dug out from the, this side off the track here, we spread out over here. 
and rolled it down. Um, and eventually, like say, the, the track that comes off the main line further up will go round the back of that tree behind the digger and come towards us and then split into two different tracks to go into the shed. Ignore this piece of random track sitting in the foreground, that's not actually going there, that's just a bit spare that we made up, we've got to move out of the way and perhaps use somewhere else. Um, you can see where it goes from ballast to um, type 1 limestone. That's roughly how big the concrete pad is um, going to be. You can see, see the rails sticking out from under the door that we've put in, in the workshop and I'll, I'll go in there later on and get some pictures inside the workshop of the track work we've done in there. Um, but basically the gap under the door up to rail height is going to be filled up with the concrete screed for the floor inside and then outside it's going to run at the same height out to where the edge of this type 1 is where it runs the ballast. Let's say which is about 4 metre um, outwards, a rectangular square of concrete um, just for like say standing on and doing light maintenance work and um, preparing locos and stuff. There's two tracks in there in the shed but there's only got one goes the um, right one only goes halfway down the shed and the other one goes right through to the back of the shed so um, that's what's happening here and you can see some drainage that they've put in for us so that's for downpipes when we've uh, when they come back and finish the um, building bits. So now we're down down the other end by Woody Bay um, this is the other end of the shed of the pound round. You can see some rails sticking down to the door there. That's the track that's going to come out. It's going to come along here um, when it's all been greyed out. And that's going to join up with that point that's just sitting on the top there. We've got to cut those rails back underneath. But um, that point, although there's going to be another one like that, that one's going to be moved and turned around to be used further up behind me because we haven't. there's been a bit of delay in um, the points that we've been ordering. So three of them not arrived yet. So we're going to use that one for somewhere else for the moment. Finally facing the other back the other way, looking back towards where we just walked down from. The track's all been levelled out. And like I say, the point actually that I just showed you behind me on the track is going to be turned around and go off the main line and into the uh, tracks that you see by the right hand side of me and that goes into our P way shed. So hopefully we'll by the end of tomorrow, which is Friday, we've got to have trains running again on for the weekend for passengers. So at the very least we need access which we've more or less got already out of the building here for the carriage shed to run the train and hopefully we'll have the track connected up to this um, other point on the right hand side but from from then on down to down here where i'm standing doesn't necessarily need to be done at the moment because we that's still not being used and we can we're using a different method of operation but hopefully like i say by friday night we'll all be good for running on the weekend and uh i'll wander into workshop in a bit when they've opened it up and we'll have a look inside at the track they've done in here. Well it's turned out to be a, a lovely afternoon now. You can hear people working in the background with the Kango. But uh, this is inside the shed. You can see the two tracks have been laid here. This one right in front of us goes right away through over the pit. And the other one stops halfway um, because that's all we need for storing two locos on. I don't know how much you're going to see, but we'll go inside, it'll get a bit darker. And uh, basically we put all the rails in uh, on these bearers that the building came on. And uh, that's where this one stops and you see the bridge over the pit. And this will be in filled with concrete when they uh, come back in a couple of weeks time, or weeks so time, uh, right up to rail level and around the pit. So you won't see any beams and it'll be flush floor concrete up to the bottom of the um, wood floor uh, sort of walls and panelling which they've done all the way over the top. I also started doing some preliminary excavation work, um, putting cable trays on that will be where we run the wires in all the way around and there's a distribution board in the corner there. So that's what's been happening inside and uh, we'll come back the next day or two and see what else in progress has been made. So this is where the track work has been laid up to right below my feet here. That's where it stops. Behind me is Woody Bay Station and we've ballast in the process of ballasting and levelling up all the track. You can see all the jacks in there and distance. 
um, up towards crossover where we joined up to the existing main line. It's now Friday afternoon around about four o'clock. Uh, trains are gonna be running tomorrow out of the um, shed there next to us. And uh, we'll take a walk up and see it in more detail.